to Unity of Lawrence. It's so great to see all of you on Zoom today. I'm looking for faces, looking for faces. Can you all hear me? So good to see you. Welcome to Light and Love. That is Unity of Lawrence. It's so nice to have this place to get centered again after the week we've had, my goodness. So I'm, I hope we have a good crowd. We all need some, some uh, at least I do, I need some centering and I'm so thrilled with the lineup we have today. It's pretty incredible. As you know, we start everything with prayer. So let's join our prayer chaplain, Sharon, as we will begin our service by opening to that divine presence we know is within us. Yes, as Kathy mentioned, despite whatever has happened in our outer world or is happening or will happen, we come together to experience spiritual community and to remember for ourselves and to remind one another of the power, the love that is within, that this our love, our power of love is greater than anything that is going on anywhere else. And we are so grateful to have our speaker, our musicians, everyone here today to inspire us, to open up and remember who we are. And so it is, amen. Amen. Please join Holly in singing Get Ready My Soul by Daniel Neymar. Thank you so much, Holly. Oh my goodness, I don't know what we'd do without you. We are so fortunate to have you with us always. So please join me in the unity intentions. Please affirm with me the unity's founding principle. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the source of all good. Now our unity of Lawrence vision, united in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And finally, our UOL mission, we are a thriving spiritual community, sharing loves, love building bridges and inspiring transformation. Our music person today, oh goodness, Millie Webb, I love her. Look, Millie Webb is a Kansas City based singer, songwriter. Having grown up in unity, Millie is the founder of Raise Up, a unity-based group for conscious parenting and an active member of Unity Village Chapel. She uses her understanding of unity principles to write music that touches on both the human experience and the Christ nature within. Always seeking to bring about a smile, a tear, or an aha moment, she is delighted to be sharing this morning with all the beautiful souls of UOL and to all those joining in for today's service. Please welcome Millie.
Kelly, thank you. Woohoo! That that was fabulous. And here we go with our speaker today. We're all so excited about Pam Grout. Pam is the number one New York best, Times best-selling author of 20 books, including the brand new Course in Miracles Experiment, a starter kit for rewiring your mind and therefore the world. She's a freelance writer who was published with Scientific American Explorations, Outside, Men's Journal, People Magazine, Travel and Leisure, and many other publications. She's the creator of the TV series Going Rogue and the wacky proliferator behind two popular blogs. Her current focus is the 222 Foundation she started to, to honor her magical daughter, Tasman, who has been guiding her from the non-physical since October 15th, 2018. Can, can, Pam can be reached at www.pamgrout.com and the at sign Pam Grout on all the socials. Please join me in welcoming Pam Grout. Hey everybody, I guess can you all hear me now? All right, okay, well, uh, we unitics are often accused of being too Pollyanna, of focusing too much on rainbows and light. As my friend Anita Morjani used to say, when she first heard that, she almost fell off her unicorn. Well, today, not only am I going to lean into those three notions, but I'm going to present scientific evidence that prove the soundness of all three. Let's start with rainbows. Basically, they're an illusion caused by reflection, refraction, and dispersion of light in water droplets. A rainbow may look like a multicolored arc, but it's not really there. And that's the truth about the world we see out there. It's not really there. Or it's not there in the way we think it's there. Because everything in our world is actually energy. Every single thing, nothing is solid, nothing is permanent, and nothing is divided from the whole. And so I'm going to prove these things to you and um, with scientific evidence, and I'm going to um, tell you how that you can use this knowledge for your benefit. And as you guys know, my book, E Squared, was the one that was really popular. It was all about energy. And and I've always loved energy. In fact, when I first wrote the book, God doesn't have bad hair days, it, nobody got it. But when I turned it into energy, it became really popular, even though it was the same book. But so I've always been really focused on energy. That's been the most, you know, the important thing. I mean, I talk about, you know, this field of infinite potentiality in terms of energy. But just recently, over the last 30 days, I've been participating in this Qigong circle. And there's been 175 people from 15 different countries. And we've been working with Master Ming Tong, um, doing videos and various things. But the reason I've loved it so much is because it's really a way of embodying this energy that I've been writing about. Um, so anyway, it, it, it just really got me excited. So I thought, well, I'm going to talk about this today in my talk about some of the stuff that I've been learning in my Qigong group. And as you probably know, I think I read about this in East Square, for about a hundred years, we've known that nothing that we see is really the way it is. I mean, it, it appears to be solid, but when you look down at the microscopic level, nothing is really solid. In fact, we're all just kind of these clouds of energy. And so, and we've also learned that the two fundaments of uh, physical reality, space and time are, are shaky as a Jenga tower. But first of all, I wanna talk about our own limited perceptions. So you can go ahead and call up that uh, PowerPoint, Avery. Okay, so what do you guys see here? I'm sure probably you're all saying Dalmatians. But if you really look at it, you realize that it's actually a bunch of blobs of black paint or black printer ink or whatever it is on white space. But we tend to, you know, we, we fill in the blank, so to speak. Because looks are deceiving. We think our senses are accurately and passively processing the world out there, but our brains automatically adjust images to create illusions of continuity and solidity. Our brain creates models of reality depending on our assumptions about what does and doesn't exist. 
Now remember that thing on Facebook with the dress, is it yellow, is it purple or gray or whatever it was? Well, we all saw it differently. Okay, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, Avery. Okay, there's another example of something, Lisa Simpson, it's not really as it appears. I mean, we all just leap to the conclusion that that is Lisa Simpson because that's what we've been taught. That's what we've been shown to be true. So this is, you know, what we think we're seeing this reality that we think we're seeing is really just our mind stitching things together. So in fact, even the things that we see, if it goes faster than 16 bits per second, then it looks like it's all one continuous line. But if it slows down that, you can see it. So okay, we'll go to the next, the next, um, the next slide. Okay, now do you see this on the frequency? See the little thing that's circled there? That's the part of what we can see. And as you can see, there's this huge, huge spectrum of light that we don't even see. So it's just a little teeny tiny fraction of what we're actually seeing. Okay, so our brain creates an illusion. It, it makes things look solid, constant, and independent of other things. But the brain's model of reality established over a lifetime of experience infers or prejudges sensory, uh, sensory inputs. And that is the influence that we see. So it's not really raw sensory data. It's basically a reducing valve. But we think that what we're seeing is like that our minds are just like photography, you know, like the camera theory, like we're just looking at it at the world like a camera. We're just taking what's there. But we're actually stitching it into our own view of reality. And when it comes to us, the closer we look at us, the less of us we find. Again, we are really energy. We, we humans are made up, the average human being is made up of seven billion, 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 three billions of atoms. And to how you would write that would be seven with 27 zeros after it. That's how many atoms. And these are mostly just empty space, these atoms. We're really, like I said, clouds of energy. And if you kind of want to compare it, like if you take a fly and put it in Chief Stadium, the little fly is about how much of what material reality is really there. The rest of it's all this big giant space. In fact, scientists have estimated that if they took all human beings and took out everything that wasn't space or energy, we could fit the entire human population on a sugar cube. I mean, that's how little we really are, these material bodies. And so most of who we are is invisible. And so I think as spiritual people, we would like to connect more to that invisible part of ourselves, that bigger part of ourselves. Okay, could you go ahead and go then to the, um, the next slide? Okay, it's, I couldn't remember exactly what it was. It's, again, this shows us another way that our looks de deceive us. Because look at that deer there. The deer can see a much bigger 280 degrees around them but the human being can only see 120 degrees. So that just shows you a little bit of, of how we've really limited what is possible. So another thing about uh, thinking about our bodies not being really solid is that we, that 100 trillion neutrinos stream through our body every second. We're just a swirl of energy. Basically that's who we are is a swirl of energy. As I said in East squared, material world ain't all it's cracked up to be. So um, anyway, um, we're in constant flux. And I think this is a really um, good way to look at things. Because and here's one thing we think is permanent. Well, here's just an example. Our stomach lining every five days is replaced completely. Our lungs, the, the neutrinos and the atoms in our lungs are not the same as they were six months ago. And the very oldest cells in our body are 10 years old. I mean, that's the very oldest one. And in mean, five years, 98% of who we think we are is completely different. And another kind of cool thing to think about as far as who we are, that, you know, galaxy stars, planets, bacteria, blue whales, they're all made of 92 atomic elements. I mean, all of us, we're all made of the same thing. So we're not really even separate. And so one kind of cool thing about this, oh, we're kind of made from stardust, like 5.5 billion old stardust. So, you know, instead of saying, you know, those old things that say made in China, we could just as easily say, say made in Orion or whatever, which is kind of cool. It means we, we all look a lot younger than we really are. So that's kind of a cool thing. <laughs> So anyway, um, so how do we um, how do we hook into this energy field? Um, 
this energy field that it's, it's more to our advantage. The first step, I think, is really just to realize this is not who we really are. And I've recently been doing a thing where I just say, this is a dream, this is a dream, this is a dream. And it's been really effective, like in Course in Miracles, which I start every year, the first 50 lessons are all about changing our reality, changing how we look at things. And, um, and it basically says consciousness creates the reality around us. So we have to realize that everything we believe, everything we think is actually upside down. Like we believe there's scarcity. We believe um, the world is a scary place. We believe all these things. But once we let go of some of that, those things we've you know, let into our brain and we let into what's really in there. The truth of it is our brain takes in like 11 bits of the, how many trillion, I'll see, I wrote it down. Oh, of a billion uh, a billion bits that come into our sensory bits that come into our, our brain. And we take in 16 of those billion. So that's pretty amazing. So there's a lot more that's out there. And basically what we let in, because we've got our visual cortex, only 20% is um, attached to the different nerve cells, is attached to the retinas. Only 20 80% of what our visual cortex see is, is uh, the regions of the brain that remember memory and emotions. So, you know, what we're seeing, it's not even real. It really is an illusion. And that's what Courts and Miracles sort of trains us to look at, to look at it differently. Um, so how do we hook to it? We, we really have to do some inner work. And I think right now it's sort of important for all of us to start doing the inner work and to recognize that the inner work is super important. And I've got a story about Gandhi that I just learned yesterday. I think it's pretty amazing. You know, we all know about how he, you know, his, his activist work in South Africa. And then we think he went straight to India and then, you know, threw off the English colonialism. But what most of us don't know, you know, if you watch that movie, that's what you think. But most of us don't know that for 16 years, he was in an ashram with, well, I don't know, 40 people, I think, kind of getting ready for this, uh, this revolution that he was uh, getting ready to launch. So I think it's really important or I guess what I'm trying to say is that we may think the inner work isn't that important, but it is really important and it really will change the world outside. Um, so, so anyway, that's one of the things I think <laughs> that it's important to do. And I've been practicing this Qigong to get in touch with this energy field. And I feel like by doing this, I've literally been in touch with all these people. I mean, I can just feel this chi field that I feel like I'm a part of with these people, you know, all over the globe. And I, I think all of us here today can create a chi field um, that will create peace and harmony out there. But, you know, we do have to, to focus in on the inner world. And one of the main things that we can do is try to get out in nature, even when it's cold outside, you know, try to get outside as much as we can, because the energy out there, I think, is a lot more conducive to what we want. But anyway, so I guess in, in short, what I'm trying to say is we've been using a pretty lousy map um, to, to create reality or to think what we're seeing of, of reality because there's really a whole lot more possible and learning about how our brains create an illusion for us, helps us open to these inner realms that are possible to us. There's just so much more vastness. There's so much more possibilities. And you know, in unity, we call it God, but um, it's been called all different things, but that is what we wanna hook into. That is the power and the force field that is available to all of us. And what's happened is our energy's kind of gotten clogged up. And so when even like any kind of diagnosis that we might say we have, that's just clogged energy. And when you look at it that way, instead of, oh, I've got this cancer or I've got this whatever, it's just clogged energy. So that's kind of a cool way to look at it. And it's not permanent. I mean, again, science has proven that nothing is permanent. I mean, I use the example of, of my daughter, Taz, like it's really apparent to me as she was growing up, that, you know, she was no longer that baby in the crib. A little bit later, I'd look at her and she was no longer that first grader and you know, going off in her little flower dress to kindergarten. She was no longer the teenager. You know, we, we evolve. Um, and now she's no longer in a body. She's more of a, you know, a spiritual realm. But all of her consciousness and her ideas and her truth is still here. So the more we let go of these concretized truths that we think the way it is, the more we can expand into this other deeper reality. So anyway, that's kind of what, what I had. I had 11 pages of notes and that's sort of uh, what I've had. So I, I, maybe I've finished a little early, but anyway, that, that's it. So 
thank you guys for being here. And I hope you all will join me in doing the inner work and connecting with that energy field, connecting that bigger part of ourselves. We only see like 96%, or we only see 4% of what's possible. 96% of what's there. You know, we see the stars, the galaxies, that kind of stuff. And we know there's just 96% of energy that, that's invisible to us. So let's hook into the invisible energy. The reason that scientists, they can't identify what it is, but the reason they know it's there because of the way the gravitational force fields work. So they know it's there, but they can't pinpoint it. So we in unity, of course, are lucky because we know it's there and we know how to use it. We know how to tap into it, you know, through our inner work. And um Let's all be like Gandhi and go in and do that inner work and then uh, create it out there in the, in the universe, in the world. Okay, so I guess I'm supposed to do the meditation now. Is that correct? Yes, that would be great, Pam. Okay, so um, Ava, can you go ahead and put on the song? What I've got is a song that I've also run into in my Qigong group. And it's, I thought it was interesting. The, the author or the artist of the song is the same artist that, um, that, that the music was played today. But anyway, I'd like to um, play the song and everybody listen and even watch the video. So go ahead and do that. It's, I think it's like the fifth one on my PowerPoint. I think I might have um, gone over a couple of the other PowerPoints. I do not have a song, Pam. At the very end of that PowerPoint? Uh, yeah. it's, it should be the last slide. And it's actually a last video. No, ma'am, there is no. Uh, OK, all right, well, I'll just. I, I don't know that I've led in meditation before, but anyway, so let's everybody just close our eyes and just really, let's take our consciousness, this, this bigger invisible part of ourselves, and let's bring that to the foreground. You know, a lot of the material world has been forefront of our consciousness. We've been looking at, you know, our bodies and trying to protect them. And we've been worried about the things we see on the news. But that is just a small percentage of who we really are. So today, as we enter into meditation, let's really bring our attention to the invisible part of ourselves, the bigger part of ourselves, the truth of ourselves. And let's just rest in this field of this bigger part of what I call the field of infinite potentiality. Let's know that anything is possible, and that that tiny percentage of what we see is just old cultural patterns, old ways of doing things that we can change as soon as we take our attention off of those things. We now place our attention upon this bigger field, this invisible realm, this truth, this truth that is perfect in every way, that is light. I talked earlier about the rainbows and light and part of this, what is out there is just light zooming around in the universe and we literally solidify it. We freeze it into things by our viewpoint. So today, as we enter into the silence and I will shut up here in a minute, let's just really bring to the foreground that truth of this light, of this love, of this bigger thing and let's just ask in that let's just revel in this higher truth and i will be quiet now for a minute and i wish i could play the song but um we will just sit here and feel that energy
You're my life, you're my breath, you're a smile, you're my guest, you're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love, you're my hands, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're a hug, you're the light in the dark, you're the spark, you are fun, you're my mom, you are water, you're the stars, you're my daughter, you're my friend till the end, you're my dreams, you're my father, you're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround, I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere in the clouds, you're my pain, you're my sorrow, you're my hope for tomorrow, you're the strength when I'm hollow, you're the path that I follow, you're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that Everything all that I am, all that I see, all that I've been, and all that I'll ever be is a blessing. It's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all, for it all. Stop to take a bow and keep moving forward and start looking towards your heart. It'll open all the doors and only then you'll start to hear the world singing chorus with your mind and heart. Aligned in purpose, everything all will feel gorgeous. I sit and pray cause what I have is more than I deserve or could ever imagine How do I give back to all of this magic and spread the love so everybody can have it Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor, if I got a family or if I'm all alone Bad things happen, I can just complain and moan But there's a million things that I can be grateful for The small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that everything is a gift. Ah, great. The song worked anyway, if the video didn't. Um, anyway, okay, well, that's my part, I guess. I don't know what happens from here, but thank you guys. We will be joined by Millie again for a wonderful song. Thank you so much, Pam.
Thank you, Millie. That was beautiful. And Pam, oh my goodness. Thank you for that great information. I, I need those reminders constantly and I can't wait to get your new book. Thank you so much. It is now, it is our time to give thanks and offering. I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our hearts. Let's affirm together, please. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Join Holly in singing Return Again by Shauna Knoll. And please go online and give via PayPal or write a check and mail it to the Unity of Lawrence. Thank you. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return to what you are, return to who you are, return to where you are, born and reborn again. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Gratitude. Gratitude is the transformative power that we have, transformative in our inner and our outer lives. Through gratitude, we can change our experience of what is. I'm grateful to know that the people who stormed the Capitol this week are not real, especially the one with horns on his head. I am grateful that Twitter accounts can be suspended and we can feel safer. I am grateful that we have this community where we can remind ourselves and be reminded of the skills and the talents and the gifts that we have to change our lives. And also that we have the ability to support our spiritual community in many different ways, but especially through our gifts financially. And so it is, amen. I invite you to open up your heart space. Let these words resonate within your soul. Imagine a world where each heart's connected, where peace and love are the ultimate goal. When we realize the beauty of one heart, one mind, and our power there within, the world can function in miraculous ways, where true abundance can really begin. So I'll keep it simple, I'll keep it brief. I'll sing the words as clear as a bell. No hidden meaning, you can listen with ease. But sing along if you want to as well. And the message is,
Wonderful. Thank you, Millie. Goodness, what a great service we're having today. Now I have announcements for you. Our church annual meeting is scheduled for Sunday, January 31st. Please plan on staying on Zoom after the service for this important congregational meeting. Members will vote on the new board members, the 2021 budget, and review 2020. Please mark your calendars for this important date. We are pleased to announce that we're co-hosting with High Impact Strategies, LLC, to pre present a diversity, equity, and inclusion workshop titled, hmm, what are you thinking? Implicit bias, the association between thought and actions. The workshop is Sunday, January 24th from 11 to 1230. Please note this is in place of our regular service and will be at a different Zoom link that is posted on our website and will be listed in the e-news and Sunday morning reminder for that week on email. Plan on attending this very important event brought to you by our social justice committee. Lastly, join us next week, January 17th, as Alex Kimball Williams brings us Anti-Racist Spirituality, special music with Cindy Novello. Well, now it's one of my favorite parts. Let's bless our youth and each other. Here we go. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the divinity in you. Now let's sing the original peace song with Steve Epley. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. Children all are we Let us walk with each other Perfect harmony Let peace begin with me Let this be the moment now With every step I take Let this be my solemn Take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Please join us in the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. We invite our speakers and others to stay on a line for a few minutes via Zoom. We'd love to chat. So please hold on and Avery, we will um, unmute all of us. And as he's doing that, I wanna say, Avery Wilcoxon, you deserve a round of applause.